immune system, meaning, components, and implications. Welcome to the Ultimate Wellbeing. Ultimate Wellbeing is a health and well-being channel. The Ultimate Wellbeing channel will help to improve your health and well-being. On this channel, you will see videos promoting good health and well-being that will assist you to improve your health and well-being to ensure your ultimate well-being. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel to get a regular dose of good health and well-being tips to become a better you for ultimate well-being. Relax, have fun as you see our videos and become a better you for your total well-being. Thank you. Immune system, meaning, components and implications are discussed in this video. Now, let us start. What is an immune system? The immune system is made up of special organs, cells and chemicals that fight infection, microbes. The main parts of the immune system are white blood cells, antibodies, the complement system, the lymphatic system, the spleen, the thymus, and the bone marrow. These are the parts of your immune system that actively fight infection. The Immune System and Microbial Infection The immune system keeps a record of every microbe it has ever defeated, in types of white blood cells, B and T lymphocytes, known as memory cells. This means it can recognize and destroy the microbe quickly if it enters the body again before it can multiply and make you feel sick. Some infections, like the flu and the common cold, must be fought many times because so many different viruses or strains of the same type of virus can cause these illnesses. Catching a cold or flu from one virus does not give you immunity against the others. Parts of the immune system The main parts of the immune system are 1. White blood cells 2. Antibodies 3. Complement system 4. Lymphatic system 5. Spleen 6. Bone marrow and 7. Thymus Now, let us describe each part of the immune system. 1. White blood cells White blood cells are the key players in your immune system. They are made in your bone marrow and are part of the lymphatic system. White blood cells move through blood and tissue throughout your body, looking for foreign invaders, microbes, such as bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. When they find them, they launch an immune attack. White blood cells include lymphocytes, such as B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells, and many other types of immune cells. 2. Antibodies Antibodies help the body to fight microbes or the toxins, poisons, they produce. They do this by recognizing substances called antigens on the surface of the microbe, or in the chemicals they produce, which mark the microbe or toxin as being foreign. The antibodies then mark these antigens for destruction. There are many cells, proteins and chemicals involved in this attack. 3. Complement System the complement system is made up of proteins whose actions complement the work done by antibodies. 4. Lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a network of delicate tubes throughout the body. The main roles of the lymphatic system are to manage the fluid levels in the body, react to bacteria, deal with cancer cells, deal with cell products that otherwise would result in disease or disorders, and absorb some of the fats in our diet from the intestine. The lymphatic system is made up of 1. Lymph nodes, also called lymph glands, which trap microbes. 2. Lymph vessels, tubes that carry lymph, the colorless fluid that bathes your body's tissues and contains infection-fighting white blood cells, and 3. White blood cells, lymphocytes. 5. Spleen. The spleen is a blood filtering organ that removes microbes and destroys old or damaged red blood cells. It also makes disease fighting components of the immune system, including antibodies and lymphocytes. 6. Bone marrow. Bone marrow is the spongy tissue found inside your bones. It produces the red blood cells our bodies need to carry oxygen, the white blood cells we use to fight infection, and the platelets we need to help our blood clot. 7. Thymus The thymus filters and monitors your blood content. It produces white blood cells called T-lymphocytes. 
the body's other defenses against microbes. As well as the immune system, the body has several other ways to defend itself against microbes, including 1. Skin, skin is a waterproof barrier that secretes soil with bacteria killing properties. 2. Lungs, lungs are mucus in the lungs, phlegm, traps foreign particles, and small hairs, cilia, wave the mucus upwards so it can be coughed out. 3. Digestive tract, digestive tract is the mucus lining that contains antibodies, and the acid in the stomach can kill most microbes, and 4. Other defenses, these are body fluids like skin oil, saliva and tears that contain antibacterial enzymes that help reduce the risk of infection. The constant flushing of the urinary tract and the bowel also helps. Fever is an immune system response. A rise in body temperature, or fever, can happen with some infections. This is an immune system response. A rise in temperature can kill some microbes. Fever also triggers the body's repair process. Common disorders of the immune system. It is common for people to have an over or underactive immune system. Overactivity of the immune system can take many forms, including allergic and autoimmune diseases. Allergic diseases, this is where the immune system makes an overly strong response to allergens. Allergic diseases are very common. They include allergies to foods, medications or stinging insects, anaphylaxis, life-threatening allergy, hay fever, allergic rhinitis, sinus disease, asthma, hives, urticaria, dermatitis and eczema. Autoimmune diseases, this is where the immune system mounts a response against normal components of the body. Autoimmune diseases range from common to rare. They include multiple sclerosis, autoimmune thyroid disease, type 1 diabetes, systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, and systemic vasculitis. Underactivity of the immune system, also called immunodeficiency, can be inherited. Examples of these conditions include primary immunodeficiency diseases such as common variable immunodeficiency, CVID, X-linked severe combined immunodeficiency, SCID, and complement deficiencies. Arise as a result of medical treatment, this can occur due to medications such as corticosteroids or chemotherapy. Be caused by another disease, such as HIV AIDS or certain types of cancer. An underactive immune system does not function correctly and makes people vulnerable to infections. It can be life-threatening in severe cases. People who have had an organ transplant need immunosuppression treatment to prevent the body from attacking the transplanted organ. Immunoglobulin Therapy Immunoglobulins, commonly known as antibodies, are used to treat people who are unable to make enough of their own, or whose antibodies do not work properly. This treatment is known as immunoglobulin therapy. Until recently, immunoglobulin therapy in some countries, including Australia, mostly involved the delivery of immunoglobulins through a drip into the vein, known as intravenous immunoglobulin, EVIG, therapy. Now, subcutaneous immunoglobulin, SIG, can be delivered into the fatty tissue under the skin, which may offer benefits for some patients. This is known as a subcutaneous infusion or SIG therapy. Subcutaneous immunoglobulin. Subcutaneous immunoglobulin is like intravenous immunoglobulin. It is made from plasma, the liquid part of blood containing important proteins like antibodies. Many health services are now offering SIG therapy to eligible patients with specific immune conditions. If you are interested, please discuss your requirements with your treating specialist. Immunization Immunization works by copying the body's natural immune response. A vaccine, a small amount of a specially treated virus, bacterium or toxin, is injected into the body. The body then makes antibodies to it. If a vaccinated person is exposed to the actual virus, bacterium, or toxin, they will not get sick because their body will recognize it and know how to attack it successfully. Vaccinations are available against many diseases, including measles and tetanus. The immunizations you may need are decided by your health, age, lifestyle, and occupation.
Together, these factors are referred to as halo, which is defined as 1. Health Some health conditions or factors may make you more vulnerable to vaccine-preventable diseases. For example, premature birth, asthma, diabetes, heart, lung, spleen or kidney conditions, Down syndrome and HIV will mean you may benefit from additional or more frequent immunizations. 2. Age At different ages, you need protection from different vaccine-preventable diseases. 3. Lifestyle Lifestyle choices can have an impact on your immunization needs. Traveling overseas to certain places, planning a family, sexual activity, smoking, and playing contact sport that may expose you directly to someone else's blood, will mean you may benefit from additional or more frequent immunizations. 4. Occupation You are likely to need extra immunizations or need to have them more often if you work in an occupation that exposes you to vaccine preventable diseases or puts you into contact with people who are more susceptible to problems from vaccine preventable diseases, such as babies or young children, pregnant women, the elderly, and people with chronic or acute health conditions. For example, if you work in aged care, child care, health care, Emergency services or sewerage repair and maintenance, discuss your immunization needs with your doctor. Some employers help with the cost of relevant vaccinations for their employees. Conclusion Immune system, meaning, components and implications have been discussed in this video. The immune system is a complex network of cells and proteins that defends the body against infection. The immune system keeps a record of every germ, microbe. It has ever defeated so it can recognize and destroy the microbe quickly if it enters the body again. Abnormalities of the immune system can lead to allergic diseases, immunodeficiencies and autoimmune disorders. Hope this video is useful and beneficial to you. We love to hear from you, please post your comment below in the comments section. If you are new here. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you can get a regular dose of good health and well-being tips to become a better you for your ultimate well-being. If this video has been helpful and beneficial to you, then, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and leave a comment below. Kindly note that any information on this video is provided for educational purposes only. Diagnosis and treatment decisions should be made in consultation with your doctor. Thank you. Thank you for seeing the ultimate well-being videos.